What's up everybody? Welcome to another Angler X video. I'm back after those spring run walleyes. It's early in the morning, it's raining, and we're pitching jigs. I go into detail on how I fish a jig in plastic and the little subtleties that you look for when fishing with this technique. Don't go anywhere. I think you're going to love this week's video, pitching plastics early in the morning for spring run walleyes. Oh, fish. Crushed. It's a good one, guys. This is a good one. Out early in the morning here. It's raining. Should be perfect conditions for some big walleye action. Fish. Yeah, buddy. It's a twenty, twenty three and a half. Beautiful fish. There you go guys. Out early in the morning. It's the rain's coming down. Oh, well we just got our first fish. It's a 23 and a half inch walleye crack that plastic. Like I said, sun's just coming up. I think we're gonna catch some fish here and hopefully stay dry, but it's all worth it when you're catching fish like that. An awesome fish. Let's get her back in the water. Yeah, that was awesome. There she goes. Yes, that was awesome. It's prime time right now for catching spring run walleyes. The water has warmed up into the low 40s. And it's game time. Here's our first fish of the morning. Let's keep after him. It's gonna be good this morning, I can tell you that already. Look, I crunched it. That. That's when you know they're eating, when they eat it like that. Go oh, beautiful. Oh, crunched. It's a good fish, guys. It's a good fish. They're really nice fish. Big head shakes. Really nice fish. Here we go. Mm 
Look at that fish gaze. Beautiful. Look at that. Just an absolute beautiful fish. What a tank. What a tank. Quick measurement. 23 incher. There we go. Get that guy back. What a beautiful fish. As you can see guys, it's raining pretty good right now, but the fish are biting. I'm gonna try and keep my lens as clear as possible for you. But that's one of the struggles of trying to record in the rain is everything gets wet, including the camera lenses. But when the fish are biting like this, it's worth the extra effort. Hoping it, hoping it doesn't last long here. And we can put a few more fish in the boat. But so far the size has been good, two tanks. They're ready this morning. What I'm fishing here is a kind of a sand flat and it's got some rubble on it. And as this current pushes up onto this sand flat, it kind of dies out and it spreads out. And that current just slows down and creates that perfect area for those walleyes to sit and eat. And then that rubble in there is gonna be good spawning grounds for them too. So. Not only do they have a good spot to eat, but it's also a prime spawning area for them. You know, I got out here before light and uh, fished the same area. I was working it pretty good when there's basically no light out and I just wasn't getting bit. But as soon as that sun started to, well, there's no sun today, but as soon as that daylight started to brighten things up just a bit, that's when those walleyes start cracking. Fish. Fish on. It's a little smaller fish. Just felt the littlest tick on that one. Eat it. Eat it good. Today I'm throwing a quarter ounce jig head. Uh, I believe it's a three and a half inch paddle tail. Uh, eight pound mono. Using my Radcliffe. 6.9 Aspire Rod. It's an extra fast, medium light action. There's one. Just like clockwork. It's going to be a good morning. Nice fish. So I really have this whole area back behind me that's holding fish. And I'm just fan casting around. Stay on active fish. And once I've worked the area over, I'll start all over again. And those fish are just kind of moving in and out of those areas. So the way I'm fishing this jig is I'm pitching it out. And uh, you want to size your jig head so that you get a nice slow drop back to the bottom. And uh, on my initial cast, I, I watch my line. And when that line kind of goes limp, I know I've hit the bottom. 
and then I reel up and that's essentially that's that's lifting the jig up off the bottom and then that jig is floating and then it's slowly dropping back to the bottom and that whole time I'm watching my yellow line when I see that line go limp I know I've hit the bottom and then I'll reel up some more and that brings that jig up off the bottom and then I'll watch that line and when that line goes limp I know it hits the bottom and when the fish hits is when it's falling back to the bottom so you can really see that line jump and you can feel it in the rod when that fish hits essentially what you're trying to do is is keep that jig as close to the bottom as you can without dragging it on the bottom you really want it just hovering above the bottom if you do get good feel and you know where your jig is you can uh, just have a nice steady reel back and not even hop it just as long as you know that jig is right along the bottom a nice slow steady reel will catch fish as well but what the hopping does is it can uh, it can trigger a bite but it also allows you to find the bottom uh, as you go over breaks and uh, depth changes so you you know if you're hopping the jig you know you're always on the bottom or near the bottom I should say the key is to to get a good feel for where that jig is know where it is know that it's near the bottom and that you're right there in the fish's strike zone and if you have too heavy of a jig you're not going to get that nice hover above the bottom essentially if your jig is too heavy all it's going to do is drag across the bottom which is not as desirable for for a walleye they will hit it that way but the idea is to get that jig to hover now if you look at at here i got the current moving from my right to left now if i cast out here uh, perpendicular to the current my jig's going to fall much faster and I'm going to be able to work a much lighter jig once I get back in here where the current's going straight away from the boat that jig is going to fall much slower and I may even want to try this stuff uh, behind me directly with the current with a heavier jig like a 3 8 ounce or a rip and wrap which will sink uh, pretty quickly as well Which I've just thrown the jig so far today, but I will put on the rip, rip and wrap here in a minute and throw that for a bit. Now, if you can see my line, see it drop there. Now I'll reel up. I'll watch the bow in my line if you can see it. Boom, there it hit the bottom again. Now I'm reeling. I'm watching that bow in my line. There it hit the bottom. I'm reeling. That's why it's important to have high vis line because you can really read where your jig is in in the water. You know exactly when it's on the bottom, and uh, you can really tell when those fish hit as well. It's a balancing act of balancing line size to jig head size to lure size all those play a factor in how fast that jig's gonna drop or how slow it's gonna drop Fish. Fish on, on the rip and rip. Sauger, big old sauger on the rip and rip. Look at that fish, what a beautiful fish. Hey guys. Gorgeous fish. That sauger. Man, what a beautiful fish. Fishing this rip and wrap similar to the jig. Big difference is 
when I lift it off the bottom, I'm giving it more of a, a strong pull to get that, that blade vibrating. And then I'm watching it fall back to the bottom. And that sauger hit it as it was falling back to the bottom. I could feel my line jump and set the hook on them. So I'm just letting it hit the bottom and then giving it a good, a good snap up. And you can do this with blade baits or ripping wraps or any lipless crankbait that you like. This is a number seven rip and rip. Number seven, number six is a good size for spring walleyes. I'll typically throw this around a little bit and then go back to the jig and just kind of switch back and forth. Right, try and figure out what kind of mood these fish are in. Sometimes they need that extra pop in the rattle of the lipless to get them cranked up just to kind of initiate a strike. Fish. Fish on. Just kind of picked it up. I didn't really feel him hit it. But he did definitely ate it though. So while I white paddle tail's definitely been my best bait. Right under the boat. Nice fish. Okay, I need to back up a little bit here. I want to crack that rip and rip. Nice fish. Here we go, guys. Nice walleye. Maybe 16, 17 incher. Still catching fish. We'll get that guy back. Fish. Okay. Just a little guy. Since it's become more light out, the fish have really kind of slowed down here. Still picking a few off though. Still looking for that giant. You know, a 14 inch fish. Back down. No mistake in that one. Finally. That one's a sugger. Nice sugger. Really nice fish. Probably 14, 15, probably 15 inch sugger. Two in a row, guys. It's pitching up in real shallow and uh, made a slight adjustment here. Fishing out just a little bit deeper. Now I contacted two fish in a row. This one's a walleye. Nice fish. Oh, 
looks like he's been up in there spawning already. He's looking pretty rough. Got some gashes on him. Oh, beat up. Get him back. Probably a 16 inch fish. Well guys, I'll tell you what. The worse the weather is, the better the fishing. We had another great day on the river, pitching plastics. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Maybe even learned something. Till next time, thanks for watching.